Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This guy right over here is Tim, and this is The Second Legacy, and thank you so much for stopping by. We've got a spicy one for you today. We've got a rep on the progressive side of the aisle. We are talking way left. Jamal Bowman, well, he took it upon himself to scream at all the Republicans and say all sorts of nasty, mean things, which tends to be a penchant of the left. And that's what we're going to break down because this is all about gun control and we have got a lot to say. But before we get into that, this content is brought to you by AccuFire. AccuFire has sponsored the content for a bunch of videos this week, this month, and we'd just like to say thank you. And if you are looking for something that's going to help you see a little clearer, give you a better picture of what you're, uh, what you're training for, AccuFire might have something that you uh, might want to look into. Thank you so much to AccuFire for making this content possible. And now we are about to dive into something that we have seen a lot, particularly on the progressive side of the left. So before we bring Tim in, I'll ask him how he's doing in a second. Mr. <laughs> Producer, could you play clip number three and then we're going to hit it. And they will the Senate ask the same questions. They're cowards. They're all cowards. They won't do anything to save the lives of our children at all. Cowards. Pressure them. Force them to respond to the question. Why the hell won't you do anything to save America's children? And let them explain that all the way up until election day in 2024. Let them explain it all the way up to election day of 2024. They're freaking cowards. They're gutless. They're not here. I'm talking about gun violence. I'm talking about gun violence. Oh school that allows teachers to carry. Carry guns? More guns lead to more death. More guns lead to more death. Look at the data. You're not looking at any data. You're, you're, you're carrying the water for the gun lobby. No, no, Look at the data. More guns lead to more deaths. Guns. States that have open carry laws have more deaths. States that have open carry laws have more deaths. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That, that's a, what, calm down. Children are dying. Nine-year-old children. The, the solution is not harming teachers. Have you ever worked in a school? 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 It's a yes or no question. You thank you. Thank you so much for cutting that. I couldn't watch that much longer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tim. I didn't say hello to you. You know what? Let's do this right. How are you doing, sir? I was doing great right up until that video clip. Now I'm angry. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> well, let's we talk. Have, about, let's get your feelings out. It helps. Here we have another gas bag in Congress out there just shouting at the sky. You know, apparently he didn't look like he's talking to anybody at first other than maybe nope. the media that was present. Yep. And he just called exactly. everybody cowards cowards hmm Gutless interesting cowards. use of, of of language there they're cowards because they're standing up for the second amendment once again we have somebody out there that's obviously advocating for an assault weapons ban and as we've pointed out many times before mm -hmm. assault weapons and firearm or let's just say rifles of any type are used less than 500 times per year in the united states in violent crime so again mm -hmm. a statistical zero that's not to downplay the the violence that does occur but what i'm saying is it's not the epidemic that they claim it is it, it simply isn't and here he's out there yelling you're cowards you're cowards and then when thomas massey god bless him he's such a great person i've met him in person he, he's, he's so almost too kind but he tries to engage with him the guy gets in his face and just keeps yelling and spitting in his face you know not intentionally about look at the data look at the data what data look at the data Mm -hmm. more guns equals more crime i guess you didn't read trent lott's book more guns less crime a factual right. look at the whole thing. Um, it, it's just this, it, this is what they have. What you see in that video clip is pure emotion. Not one mm -hmm. fact shared, pure emotion over yep. something that really is not the epidemic they're claiming it is, but they're going to keep doing this in grandstanding until they get something done. But right now they just don't have the political capital and I'm right. glad. Yep. And so there's a bunch of things about this clip. That's why this this entire show is going to be diving into this clip because there's so much here. I like to look at the big macro version right now because this is literally the progressive playbook. Jamal Bowman is a far left progressive. This guy's not in the middle. So this guy's all for the bigger the government, the better, the more regulation, the more the more any of the progressive talking points you can possibly hit, the better. That's who this guy is. But what's interesting about this is the method of which he's attempting to communicate. So he starts out, quite honestly, setting a bear trap. That was what that was. He was grandstanding when every single rep was going to walk by. He was screaming at the top of his lungs, insulting Republicans with all the cameras rolling, waiting for a Republican to walk by. Thomas Massey stepped in. And, I mean, honestly, I 
I think he did a great job when he did step in. But even when he did, all he wanted to do, Jamal Bowman, was shout and scream him down. You can't bring your points forward. I've already determined the best outcome. You are stupid. You are an idiot. You are a gutless coward. I'm going to scream you down until you don't talk. Does that sound familiar with anything else that we've seen over the past five to ten years coming from the progressive wing of the left side? They will shout you down. They will isolate you. They will marginalize you, demonize you. It's almost like it's in a book called Rules for Radicals. This is literally a leftist playbook. I'm going to shout and scream, and then I'm going to shout you down when you can't even talk. I'm going to say you don't want to solve the problem because you don't want to do it my way. They, Tim, I know that you, you, I think we talked about this, but there was a bill put forward by Ted Cruz last Congress that was literally all about hardening and safening schools. And Chris Murphy, Mr. Gun Control in the Senate, killed it and said it's a stupid conversation. Didn't go anywhere because he did that. Now, this is the same guy who's saying assault weapons bans are all about saving lives. You just had the opportunity to harden schools and do everything, but you said no. Does that mean you're a gutless coward because you're carrying the water of the gun control lobby? That's where I go. That's my Well, this is job. where I go. They're purposely keeping our schools unsecured so they can get their political agenda. I've seen this far too often to think otherwise. This is, this is by design. They're sacrificing the safety of our children so they can get a political agenda talking point. There's just no or other way to excuse what their behavior is. That it, it has to be intentional because we just had evidence, unfortunately, in the last week with the tragedy that took place in mm -hmm. Nashville. That criminal wanted to go to a, another school before they got to the Christian school, but they nixed that plan because it was a hardened school. Metal detectors and armed resource officers. So they went to the soft target the same soft target that these Democrats won't harden. And then they want to say it's about saving the children. Really? Since when? These right. are people that, that support everything. Medical procedures, won't go into details. They support yeah. all that. But if you survive that and get out into the real world, now we suddenly care about your life. It, it, it's, it's just... The hypocrisy is oozing yeah. from these people. And the fact is, is they're putting our children in danger because they are the cowards that have a political agenda. Correct. And they're willing to that, risk nailed the safety of your children to get what they need done so they can have yep. power. You just nailed it. So here's the thing. And this and this is this is where I get amped because when you're talking about just do something, do something, do anything, you put forward nine out of ten solutions that don't involve gun control, you're a coward, you're not doing anything, you don't want to help anybody, you don't want to save lives. But the second that gun control is oh, that's the only way. That's clearly the obvious obvious choice. Tim just hit on something incredibly important for you guys to understand on this. If you're watching this, please like, be with me on this. They could easily, easily pass a multi-billion dollar funding package. They do it all the time. And literally harden the schools to where they are protected as a stopgap just to stop anything more negative happening. But they will not do it because the only way that they see forward is to take an entire nation's rights. So to Tim's point, I'm not going to sit here and say it's an intentional desire that they want to see pain because I don't believe that's the case. However, I do believe that they are purposely avoiding the fact that a simple and obvious solution is providing security armed security protect the most vulnerable and innocent among us they're completely throwing that to the wayside because they only want their whole watermelon that's what they want they want gun control and that's it and anything else that doesn't happen with that i guess it just things keep on happening until we get that gun control that's the part that just makes me sick i mean i i, I do not like that part at all either intentionally or unintentionally the outcome is the same they're yes, putting people's children at risk so they can get their political agenda passed now they might not want to harden schools just out of sheer ignorance, but these are people that are college educated. And I, I want to believe they're idiots, but in all reality, they aren't. They know what they're doing. They have to. They know what they're doing. And, yeah. and, and it's just, look, we already know that if we harden those schools, they'll become more safe. We also, I think where they're coming from is if that actually worked, if they passed a bill like, okay, let's just try it. And it worked. Yep. And we went years yep. without any school shootings. Exactly. Well, now they can't get their agenda pushed through. I guess we don't need gun control after all. They ain't going to go for the that. Problem. Right? You're right. So I'm we telling you, it's, and it's intentional. Amendment. It's either, it's either, you know, through political malpractice, ignorance, or it's intentional. And I've seen it for far too long from so many different representatives, unless it's something in the water that makes them all stupid, they're doing this on purpose.
because they well, have they, they, they're going to turn their back to one solution that will work because correct. they're more focused on another solution that serves their political yep. agenda because their favorite solution is the preferred solution. And so that would lead you to believe it's not about solving the problem. It's about solving a political requirement. That's the entire point. And the sooner that the Republicans and the right side of the aisle figures out that all you have to do is put bill after bill after bill of hardening and protecting schools out there and make it a pure, I want to put $10 billion to protect these schools and let them vote it down. Because then, well, I thought you were for, for, for all these things about protecting the most vulnerable amongst us. Well, yeah, but not if it's not doesn't have this and this and this. So you're not then. Interesting. It's like polit politics 101. Come on, Republicans. I believe. <laughs> I just hope they actually Ugh. do something when they get power again. Oh, my goodness. It's just the game of politics is, and first of all, it's disgusting that it's a game, but it is a game. The Republicans literally have everything that they need to turn the tables directly at the Democrats who are trying to push for gun control and say, here's a solution. Here's no infringement of rights. Here's another 10 to 100 billion. Please say it's about printing money and inflation or the budget. Please go down that road. Or you could say, like, well, we don't want to fund any of these things. OK, let's talk about Ukraine. How many hot button objects do you want to print your way out of except this one? Goodness <laughs> gracious, Tim. Now I'm ranting. Yeah, well, it deserves a good rant. And God. look, these people could be shut down. This guy, this Bowman clown can be shut down. And how we do it, we do it through working with the political process that we have at our fingertips. So mm -hmm. what I'm asking you guys is to get politically active if you're not already. Contact your congressman, contact your senators, contact the White House, let them know what you think. Even if you think that your representative is staunchly anti-gun, you still have an obligation to contact them and let them know what you think. Because if enough of you do, it's going to cause them pause. And Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, these are people that want to stay in power at all costs. So anything that, that threatens that power, they're going to pay attention to. And that's you. So please mm -hmm. get politically active. Join a pro-gun group like Gun Owners of America and make those phone calls and send those emails. And please talk to your friends. Share videos like this on your social media so we can educate other gun owners and get them politically active because that's how we continue to win. And we will win, but we need you mm -hmm. to do it. And with all that being said, thank you for watching The Second Legacy. I do also want to invite you before we close out for today to swing by and check out the Google Doc in the video description below. If you would like to join us on our live show, live call in, just fill out that questionnaire and we'll get you on the show. You can ask us a question and we'll answer it in real time. It's a lot of fun and we look forward to seeing you guys on The Second Legacy. With that being said, we'll talk to you guys soon.